Hi everyone. It is April 22nd, 2019. I want to read most of Paul Craig Roberts' article that was posted April 17, The Triumph of Evil. Paul Craig Roberts. I went to his Wikipedia page, listen to this, an American economist, author, and conspiracy theorist. He's a conspiracy theorist. He's, he's a nut job. He's a crazy guy. Under, uh, uh, um, under, well, under Reagan, he was assistant secretary of treasury. Uh, he was the editor of um, the Wall Street Journal, I believe. Unbelievable conspiracy theorist. Well, let me once again remind everybody those who call you a conspiracy theorist are people who cannot think for themselves and they have allowed the CIA to think for them. They have allowed the CIA to make of their self a parrot. Oh, okay, I'll go along with what the CIA has told me to say. You're a conspiracy theorist. This is the memo, the CIA memo, memo that came out very shortly after the Warren Commission because there were so many people who did not like the findings of the Warren Commission on JFK's assassination. The Warren Commission's findings were as ludicrous as the findings of the 9-11 Commission, but well, question anything, question the official narrative, and you are conspiracy theorists. To those who use that to shut people up, use that term, speak that term, do you realize how unbelievably stupid you sound? So, conspiracy theorists, well, uh, they wanted to bring it about because they didn't want the truth out. So that was the term to put on anybody who was digging into the evidence, looking at the facts, weighing them, using their critical thinking skills to come up with conclusions. And, you know, it's fascinating too because reading this memo, you you're like reading everything that's happening on a daily basis now on mainstream media especially also with government officials that well it states that anybody who's questioning the truth or doing their own evidence uh, uh, research and coming up with evidence that is uh, what well it's conflicts with that official narrative. You have to say things like the investigation was uh, thorough. It was as thorough as humanly possible. These are the charges against the critics. Charges of critics are without serious foundation. Without serious foundation. I can't highlight on this page. Um, you say any further speculative discussion of the topic only plays into the hands of the enemy, hands of the opposition, as if we're bad people. We're playing into the hands of the enemy. And the enemy are the propagandists and those who are lying. Uh, conspiracy talk is generated by communist propaganda. It's the Russians. It's the Soviets. You urge everyone to discourage unfounded and irresponsible speculation. You employ propaganda assets in media, book reviews, feature articles, and you point out that critics, they're just wedded to their own theories before all the evidence was in, right? They just came out talking about their theories before all the evidence came in. 
um, that they have a political interest or a financial interest, that they are um, uh, all about their own ego, ego driven, they're full of intellectual pride, you degrade them, you ridicule them, uh, you state that their research was flawed, inaccurate, hasty, and you also claim that there's no significant, no significant new evidence uh, that has emerged. All the evidence, the significant evidence, has been looked at and weighed um, that these conspiracy theorists, the critics, they overvalue particular points and ignore other points. And conspiracies, they're just impossible to conceal in a free and democratic nation. Really. So, anybody who's using that term, well, Wikipedia, propaganda, yeah, they have an awful lot of facts, but they also have to throw in conspiracy theorists. All right. Well, uh, it was not too long ago that certainly conservatives would listen to Paul Craig Roberts working uh, for Reagan in Reagan's administration. But no, now today he's a crazy person. Okay. Um, it is very hard to to continue fighting against all of the lies. This is a very good article. And I'm going to, I guess, do a just talking on this man, Mike Pompeo, our Secretary of State, former CIA director. But I'll leave that for another video. So Paul Craig Roberts hears on NPR that, <laughs> oh my God, whoa, NPR. I can't help but think about my past that was not too long ago, listening to NPR. Oh, that's the soothing voices of NPR. I had it on all the time. And I believed what NPR was saying. NPR, it's a, a corporate media outlet. Oh, but they say funding only, only comes from listeners like you. It's kind of like Democracy Now, Amy Goodman. Funding only comes from viewers like you when the funding is coming from George Soros directly or the CIA indirectly. So on NPR, just like CNN or MSLSD, which I heard someone say last night, um, all of our media outlets are corporate media. They're all talking about Venezuelan dictator Maduro. So Paul Craig Roberts says by repeating over and over that a democratically elected president is a dictator, the prostitutes create that image of Maduro in the minds of vast numbers of people who know nothing about Venezuela and had never heard of Maduro until he is dropped on them as dictator. And it's unfortunate that Americans and so many of them really believe that they're well informed because they're watching mainstream media. They're reading mainstream media. The New York Times, that prestigious publication, yes, I know them. I was one of them. And they won't get off the rags because they're they're the educated elite. Nope. 
they won't they know and because they're so smart and those degrees on their wall well there that degree says I'm smart so I don't have to listen to you and I don't have to do any research on my own to find out if I'm being lied to that's the state of mind that we are facing the collective state of mind I'm smart I don't have to do the research and I'm going to be a puppet of the CIA and call you a conspiracy theorist Nicolas Maduro Moros was elected president of Venezuela in 2013 and again in 2018 he was freely elected and I have posted videos showing all the proof yep elected uh, and well we decided he's just a dictator and he stole the election even though Nicolas Maduro invited the United States to come in and observe the election nope we are not going to do that because we know that your elections are um, well the kind of elections that you would hope all countries would engage in the observers there for the election said uh, there was no tampering but if we went in to observe we wouldn't be able to lie and say hey you stole that election and we're now going to recognize this guy uh, named Juan Guaido as the president wow wow what extraordinary arrogance of the Americans yay we that that's like Venezuelan saying Trump you're not the president and we're gonna recognize Nancy Pelosi woo well Juan Guaido had the uh, was in the same an equivalent position uh, that Nancy Pelosi is in in the United States so <laughs> would you like everybody recognizing Nancy Pelosi as the president of the United States don't think so but you know the, the United States government we do whatever the hell we want to do and uh, that's been going on for a very 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 long time and well uh, people get their information from mainstream media and the liars like Trump and Mike Pompeo and uh, Bolton and all of them um, we are an evil country there ain't no denying that we're saturated in lies and now you know it's so obvious that our quote-unquote leaders don't give a shit <laughs> they just don't care because the American people have become so demoralized they know when you have reached a saturation of demoralization uh, people cannot stand up for anything nothing they don't care they can't act in their own best interest uh, they, they don't know how to make decisions in their own best interest so we're screwed um, so yes he was fairly elected in 2013 and 2018 previously he served as vice president and foreign minister and he was elected to the National Assembly in 2000 despite Washington's propaganda campaign against him and Washington's attempt to instigate violence street uh, violent street protests and Maduro's overthrow by the Venezuelan military whose leaders have been offered large sums of money Maduro has the overwhelming support of the people and the military has not moved against him but we still move against Maduro because we love the Venezuelan people and well they are under a, uh, a dictatorship and we have to well you know spread that democracy right yeah no it's not about oil it's hard living this guys it's hard 
because you want the evil to stop you know you want you want so much to just live in a country that is decent and you're not living in that you're living in just this swamp you know it's a swamp we are now sludging through every single day and you know that you're not going to get anywhere when you face so many Americans who just don't give a shit about anything. It is very upsetting. Um, Maduro has the overwhelming support of the people and the military has not moved against him. What What is going on? American oil companies want to recover their control over the revenue streams from Venezuela's vast oil reserves under the Bolivarian Revolution of Chavez, continued by Maduro. The oil re revenues, instead of departing the country, have been used to reduce poverty, raise literacy inside Venezuela. The opposition to Maduro inside Venezuela comes from the elites who have traditionally allied with Washington in the looting of the country. These corrupt elites with the CIA's help temporarily overthrew Chavez, but the people in the Venezuelan military secured his release and returned him to the presidency. With the exceptions of Venezuela, Bolivia, Cuba, and Nicaragua, Latin America consists of Washington's vassal states. In recent years, Washington destroyed reform governments in Honduras, Argentina, and Brazil, and put gangsters in charge, according to U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton, a neoconservative war monger. monger. Uh, the governments in Venezuela, Cuba, and Nicaragua will soon be overthrown. New sanctions have now been placed on three countries. Ortega has been the leader of Nicaragua since uh, for 40 years. He was president 1985 to 1990 and has been elected and re-elected as president since 2006. Ortega was the opponent of Somoza, Washington's dictator in Nicaragua. We put the dictators in. We put our puppets. We overthrow countries and install our puppets to steal their resources and control every aspect of that country. My God, and it's been going on for so long. So consequently, he and his movement were attacked by the, uh, Ortega was attacked by the neoconservative operation known as Iran-Contra during the Reagan years. Ortega was a reformer. His government focused on literacy, land reform, nationalization, which was at the expense of the wealthy ruling elite. He was labeled a Marxist-Leninist. Maduro now is in trouble because Washington has stolen Venezuela's bank deposits and cut Venezuela off. The international financial system and the British stole Venezuela's gold, which makes it very hard for Venezuela to pay back its debts. The Trump regime has branded the democratically twice elected Maduro as an illegitimate president. No one among the Western prostitutes or among the vassals of Washington's empire finds it strange that an elected president is illegitimate, but one picked by Washington is not. Everything is so obvious now. Russia and China have given Maduro diplomatic support. Both have substantial investments in Venezuela that would be lost if Washington seizes the country. Russia's support for Maduro was declared by Bolton today to be a provocation that is a threat to international peace and security. Who is the threat to peace and security? You ask anybody in the world, without a doubt, they will say the United States, and no doubt, Israel. They'll say United States, Israel. But the first, the first country that is a threat 
United States. Bolton said his sanctions should be seen by Russia as a warning against providing any help for the Venezuelan government. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and Vice President Pence have added their big mouths to the propaganda against the few independent governments in Latin America. Where is the shame? Where is the shame? I feel shame as an American and all of this is being done in our name. Oh, I know a lot of Americans don't feel any shame. They, they're they disconnected from their own self. How could they possibly connect uh, their life to the life that they live in a country? Uh, they pay their taxes and they do everything their government officials tell them to do. But for some reason, they're completely disconnected from this government and don't feel any shame at, at all, which is really astounding. You know, how people can work, manufacture justifications in their own head to live what they consider to be, you know, a decent, good, moral life, when looking at it, eh, Sorry, it doesn't qualify. <sighs> yeah, where is the shame when the highest American government officials stand up in front of the world and openly proclaim that it is official U.S. government policy to overthrow democratically elected governments simply because those governments don't let Americans plunder their country. Pompeo can announce that the days are numbered of the elected president of Nicaragua. Yes, that's the new access of evil. What did, it, what did uh, Bolton call it? Uh, uh, can't remember, but Nicaragua, Cuba, Venezuela taking them down. Well, how, how does a Secretary of State of the United States actually publicly state your days are numbered to an elected president of Nicaragua who has been elected president three or four times and the world not see the U.S. as a rogue state that must be isolated and shunned how can Pompeo describe Washington's overthrow of an elected government as setting the Nicaraguan people free? Once again, we're all for the little people. Really? And I'm not claiming we're all the little people, you know, to the leaders. So don't think I think Nicaraguans are little people and we're bigger people. No. We're all the little people. Um, you think these leaders care about Nicaraguans, Venezuelans, Iraqis, Afghans, Libyans, Syrians, Americans? They don't. They're going for what they want. We have a criminal government. Obvious very obvious. It's a criminal government and it needs to be overthrown. Okay, top officials of the US government have announced that they intend to overthrow the governments of three countries and this is not seen as a threat to international peace and security. How much peace and security do Washington's overthrow of governments in Iraq, Libya, Ukraine, and the attempted overthrow of Syria bring. All of the people in those countries are suffering. So many people have died because of our bombing. Yes. Uh, and of course, we're violating international law. We, we don't, it doesn't matter. When you are a rogue criminal nation, 
you do not adhere to domestic or international law. That's why I think it's so funny. All these people take away the guns, have more restrictive legislation on guns, and that will stop all of these mass shootings as if criminals care about the law. There is only one way to describe this, the triumph of evil. The triumph of evil. And it has been. This is one triumph taking over countries that the American people don't seem to concerned about. Well, all of this is going to backfire. It has been backfiring. And yeah, the ripple effect comes right at you. Karma. Sitting back and doing nothing. But the triumph of evil has really come about by this psychological manipulation of the American people to be stupid. And anybody who speaks the truth needs to be degraded. Their character needs to be assassinated. They need to be pulled down. If they are in any position of influence, they need to be destroyed, either taken out, literally, or have their finances ruined, their reputation ruined, and we have watched this. I've watched it my entire adult life happen to people. And it continues. Now, when you see this, U.S. repeals propaganda ban spreads government-made news to Americans. We have government-made news. We have had government-made news for a very, very long time. Back in the days of the Warren Commission, the JFK assassination, that investigation, the CIA was already entrenched as a rogue criminal agency working against Americans, putting out their propagandists. But now we are so thoroughly entrenched with propagandists. And even Americans who parrot back the propaganda are propagandists. So, yeah, the triumph of evil. Well, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Triumph of evil. How did that happen? It happens when you do have a lot of good people sitting around doing nothing. It happens when you're that quote-unquote Christian nation with an awful lot of Christians who are, well, kind of like this guy. That's right. When I was a cadet, I was a what's cadet. the first, what's the cadet motto at West Point? You will not lie, cheat, or steal, or tolerate those who do. I, I, I was the CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we steal, and stole. It's, it was like, we, we, had, we, had entire, we had entire training courses. Uh, it, uh, it, it, it reminds you of the, uh, uh, the glory of the American experiment. The glory of the American experiment. Evil. The glory of the American experiment has manifested evil. And evil has triumphed. And how is it possible that lying, cheating, stealing, this guy, and he claims to be a Christian. We've had a lot of lying, stealing Christians. Yeah, you guys were the huge majority of our population. So how did this triumph of evil take place when you have had, oh, since the beginning, oh, 98% proclaiming to be Christian? 
now it's 74, 73. Oh, the numbers are, are definitely falling. How did this happen to this Christian nation? Well, you can come up with your own reasons, but there is a truth. And if you ignore the truth, then you ain't about Christ and you ain't about truth. The truth is, most people are of Mike Pompeo's character. Lying, cheating, stealing. They manufacture delusions in their own mind that they're good, decent, moral people. Yeah, we do need to work on ourselves. We cannot get anywhere. We cannot get anywhere at all if the individual, and of course it's the individual in the aggregate, but the individual do the work necessary to stop lying, cheating, stealing, behaving in ways that harm other sentient beings. If we don't make ourselves right and clean up our act, the triumph of evil will eventually make its triumph right smack on you, your life, as it has already on millions upon millions upon millions of Americans' lives. They're already suffering the consequences. Only a matter of time before we all get to suffer those consequences. And let me tell you, the consequences, whoa, man, really not pretty, not easy to live. The triumph of evil. And this is evil. You can call yourself whatever the hell you want, Mike, but you're still lying and you're still cheating and you're still stealing and you're still causing a lot of violence around the world and you're still causing a lot of suffering all over the world. Ah, but yes, everything about you is Jesus Christ. Woof! Where is the outrage from the Christian community? that this man could actually call himself a Christian. 